It's England versus Italy. What more do you want from a final? England, who have looked impressive in the knockout stages, beating Germany in the round of 16. That was mentally a huge statement for England and their fans that they can give confidence to themselves and to the fan base. And then they demolished Ukraine in the quarterfinal. And then the Denmark game, they really got tested. And I was glad to see that they got tested. They conceded their first goal in the tournament, but they bounced back right away and reacted superbly after conceding the goal, you know, creating chance after chance. And eventually they created the goal. It was their own goal, of course, from Denmark. And then for most of the game, they dominated it. I think after the 68th minute against Denmark, they completely had that game in control. And you just saw at the end of the game, England actually controlled a football game. Would you ever believe it? I mean, honestly, England have just made stride after stride in this tournament. And ever since they lost the semifinal in the World Cup against Croatia, they've looked much more confident, comfortable with the ball. Yes, sometimes they don't attack very well with this star players that they have and i know that but you know what they have very good structure in their team defensively they are sound midfield has been excellent even though they're a bit more defensive but calvin phillips gets more forward which is lovely to see and then mason mount creating and declan rice just sitting back and for italy i mean this italian squad ever since the first game of the tournament which they hosted funnily enough they beat turkey 3-0 and they looked impressive as heck in that game and they've looked impressive all this tournament i mean they got really tested in the quarterfinal against belgium but i thought they did superbly in that game you know going 2-0 up then controlling the game in the second half and then the spain game in the semi-final i mean that was a real test for them physically mentally you know they took the lead they conceded the goal late to morata but italians just you know they wanted that game more you could tell it really meant something to them mentally they are strong as well so we have two mentally strong teams which is fantastic 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 to see I mean, also, the style of play they both play. Italy, very high tempo, fast, getting out to the wingers. Barella getting involved a lot. England, who are very structured, but also attacking-wise good with Harry Kane dropping deep to get the wingers involved. So let's get into the tactics to see how these two teams will line up and who has the advantage, or is there advantage in this game, really, because it's a 50-50 game. So let's get into the tactics, guys. So for Italy, we have Donnarumma in goal, of course, one of the star players in this tournament, one of the best goalkeepers in this world. Emerson, a left back, you know, Spinozola got injured, but Emerson has done well because he's an attacking fullback. So him and Insigne will link up well down the left wing. We have Chiellini, of course, Bonucci, Di Lorenzo, Di Lorenzo, who came in for, I think, Florenzi, who got injured. So he's been doing really well. Attacking wise, he's not the greatest, but defensively, he's been very sound. And I think that's added well to Italy especially with Emerson going so far forward. Then we got Jorginho, Verratti, Barella. I mean, these three midfielders have been excellent in this tournament, especially Verratti when he came in after his injury. And him and Barella have linked up well in the midfield. And then the three up top for Italy, Insigne, Immobile, and Chiesa. I mean, Insigne has been fantastic in this tournament as well, taking on players, linking up well with Barella and Immobile. And the Chiesa, I mean, last two games he has started and he has been fantastic, you know, He's just a dangerous player. You know, I, when he went transferred to Juventus, I was very skeptical. I was like, okay, interesting. They paid a lot of money for a right winger Italian. Okay. But he's been great at Juventus. And in this tournament, he's made a super sub impact. And then when he's starting games, he's also been impactful. So I think he's going to have a huge game because Chiesa is fantastic at taking on players. And then for England, we have Pickford and goal who looked a little bit shaky against Denmark. Conceding the goal maybe got into his head a little bit confidence went down, but he's still been very very solid in this tournament Kyle Walker right back had a great game against Denmark John Stones Harry Maguire These two center back pairings have been great together. They have the chemistry from the World Cup in 2018 That's carried on into this tournament and they've just structured this English defense so well Luke Shaw left back this guy has been going forward Excellent wise, you know when Sterling or Grealish are holding up the ball here in the left side here Luke Shaw's just making these runs outside and he's just crossing in and his crosses have been dangerous All Premier League season and it's continuing in the Euros. So Luke Shaw will definitely start left back Then we got two two midfielders or two CDMs kind of Declan Rice, Calvin Phillips Cam will be Mason Mount, Harry Kane, Raheem Sterling and then the question for England who will start right winger? Hmm I have Saka but Saka could come out. We could have Foden come in, who was starting the first two games of the tournament. We could have Sancho come in, who was starting against Ukraine, and he looked impressive. We could have Grealish coming in, 
but Grealish kind of likes to play more left winger cam spot so I don't think Grealish will start then so it's a question I'm gonna keep Saka because I you know they had good chemistry in the semi-final against Denmark so I think he wants to continue that Gareth Southgate I think he wants to continue this good chemistry that England are having now let's get into how England will attack well England you know Harry Kane's dropping deep to receive the balls here really in these kind of channels of the of the offensive zone and then you know Saka who also made that run for the goal for against Denmark he kind of makes that run outside Kane will try and slip in that ball here in between the left back and the center back so he's been doing that well Sterling who likes to cut in a lot into the midfield kind of position or then he'll turn and take it outside on the left wing or then he'll hold up the ball and Luke Shaw will make these runs on the outside so watch for that a lot from England Mason Mount will try and get involved a lot. He's been linking up well with Sterling and Kane, and he'll try and make these uh, runs down the middle. So this is kind of how England will attack. Kane is very much the creator of this team. He loves to just receive these balls deep and just dish it out to the wingers, wingers, or wh whoever's trying to make a run. He'll try to pick them out really well. And then for Italy, I mean, Immobile has to have a big game. It's very, very, very crucial for Italy to win this game that Immobile plays a good game because he's been kind of poor in the last two games. His hold-up play hasn't been as impressive as it was in the group stage and against Austria. So he's got to hold up the ball well in order for Insigne to make run and Chiesa to make a run because these guys will make runs down the right wing, left wing, and especially with Emerson being such an attacking fullback, you know, he's going to make these runs down the left left sided of the field with Insigne, you know, trying to find him. And Saka is going to have to come back and defend that. So Italy, you know, when they get the ball, they really like to just counterattack quickly with pace. So, you know, Barella will try and get the ball here in the midfield, and Chiesa will make these runs super wide, and then try and take on maybe Luke Shaw or Harry Maguire, whoever's the last defender, and he'll take them on. You know, he's not going to try and look for Immobile in the box. He'll just one-on-one, one -on -one, take on the defender, get a shot off, and probably score a goal because he's been goal scoring for him now recently. So that's going to be a key issue. Barella, you know, he loves to get into these channels here as well, these kind of pockets areas. Right in front of this, uh, see, uh, right in front of the center backs. So he's gonna, you know, Declan Rice might have to man mark him in a way. We'll see if that happens. But Barella is also very key for the Italian offense with his interlink play and all that kind of stuff. And then Verratti, you know, he breaks up the play, especially if England are gonna try and counterattack quickly. Verratti will stop them right here. He did that a lot against Spain, you know breaking up the play. Verratti is so good at that kind of style, even though he's such a short guy, but you know, he plays bigger than what he what his size is. So Verratti will try and break up the play and he's a very good passer of the ball. And then Jorginho will just sit back in front of the two center backs. You know, he'll probably sit back here and just, you know, dish it out to the players, dish it out to the left back, right back, dish it out to Chiesa and Insigne. So he's just a more facilitator guy. So yeah, it's going to be interesting if, if England go with the five in the back formation like they did against Germany, because you know, it might happen. It might be that England switched to a five in the back formation. If that's the case, then Trippier will come in and then Mason Mount will come out. And then it will just be like that, a 5-2-3 kind of formation, similar to what they had against Germany. So then Saka will keep his position and Mason Mount will come out. So if that happens, then that this will be the formation if they switch to a five in the back formation. I don't think they should do that. I think they should stick with the four in the back formation because they've been really threatening attacking wise when they played this formation and especially in the last two games confidence is high four in the back formation has worked so i think england should stick with that so the key is in for tactically italy are going to counter attack quickly with their pace and the good skill players that they have out out wide england have to disrupt that and for italy it's just disrupting these through balls from Harry Kane and just kind of like man marking Harry Kane, especially Jorginho, Chiellini, Bonucci have to have good communication with each other in order to disrupt Harry Kane and not let him have so much space because otherwise he will pick out a pass. But Italy have done that really well and especially against Spain, they really cut out those channels that uh, Spain tried to play in between the left back, center back or right back, center back. So these are kind of the key issues here and the key things I've seen in this tactically between these two teams. So let's get into the prediction. Damn. What's gonna happen in this game? <laughs> oh, this game is such a 50-50 game. I really don't, I have, I really, I don't know who's gonna win. Italy, who have been really impressive this whole tournament. England, who are making stride after stride, looking impressive as well. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. I just think, I just think it's coming home. I just think England have a little bit more quality up front than Italy, especially striker play. Immobile is just 
not good enough to win a game. He might prove me wrong, and I hope for Italian fans that he proves them wrong, because Immobile just isn't the striker that Italy need, or they need a better striker, but he may prove me wrong, but I just think that England have a bit too much quality, and I think they have the momentum, they have the fans, and I think England will win this game 2-1. I'm gonna predict that it will be a 1-1, it will go into extra time, and somehow, after all the nervousness and all the nerves going into this game, and then during the game, probably if it's a 1-1 heading into extra time, England will win it in extra time or in penalties. This is not dissing Italy at all. This is going to be a fantastic matchup to see how will Italy react, especially if they go 1-0 down because they haven't been down in this tournament. They haven't been in a losing position. So I think the Italians react well because they have real leaders and Mancini is a fantastic manager. But I think just this momentum, the fans are in it, the media is well behind the team for England. And I just think they have a little bit more quality than Italy. So I'm going to go with England winning this game 2-1 and it's coming home for all the English viewers. But you guys let me know in the comments. Is it coming home or is it going to Rome? You guys let me know in the comments. If you're new around here, remember to subscribe to the channel. I just dropped my uh, preview for the Copa America final between Brazil and Argentina. So you guys can go check that out on the channel and like the video if you think it was a good preview tactically. And, you know, you might disagree with my prediction and that's OK. You know, we have good, good discussions between each other and comments and all that sort of stuff. So it's OK to have discussions and disagree with each other. That's going to happen. And especially with this game, it can go either way for either team i just think that england just have a bit more quality and that's why they're gonna win but subscribe to the channel guys if you're new around here you guys enjoy the games remember to watch the copa america final because it's argentina brazil you can't miss that and then sunday is the big one it's england versus italy so you guys enjoy the games stay safe people and peace